In this video, I'm gonna show you how to do product research like a pro using Helium 10 and a super simple three-step process. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. Okay guys, so like I said, this is gonna be a three-step process. And step one is going to be to discover initial product ideas. And to help us do this, we're gonna use the Helium 10 black box tool. So what you wanna do is log into Helium 10, come up to the tools section, and then under product research, you'll see the black box tool. So you click into that and it will take you to a page that looks just like this. Now guys, if you don't already have Helium 10, make sure to click the link in the description. That will give you big discounts off the Helium 10 suite of tools. I'll also pin it as a pinned comment for you guys. Now, once you're in this tool, what you wanna do is make sure that advanced is selected instead of simple. We're gonna be using an advanced version of this tool. And then the first thing you wanna do after that is make sure that you've selected the correct marketplace. So if you're selling or if you're looking for a product to sell on amazon.com, select amazon.com. If you're in the UK like I am, I'm gonna select amazon.co.uk. Then once you select the marketplace, the next setting that you want to pick is the category or subcategory of products that you wanna look for. So if you click here, it will show you all of the different categories that you can sell in on Amazon and then all of the different subcategories within those categories. Now, you can select all of them and look at all of these categories, but what I'd recommend is actually searching for products using this tool looking at one subcategory at a time. So I'm gonna show you how to do this process for a single subcategory, but what you wanna do is repeat this process again and again for every different subcategory that you want to look in. Now for this example, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go against my advice that I'm just gonna select a whole, a whole category here, home and kitchen, because this will show you what the problem is with selecting a single category and why you need to select a subcategory. So once you've done that, the next thing you wanna do is select a price range. Now you can sell a product that sells for any price on Amazon, but my recommended price range would be somewhere between kind of um, 15 pounds and 100 pounds maximum. That's a really good price range for an Amazon FBA product. Now, once you've selected price, the next thing that you wanna select is monthly revenue. So what do you select for monthly revenue? Well, this is gonna to be totally dependent on your starting budget. So as a general rule of thumb, you can afford to launch a product that sells around one times your starting budget in monthly revenue. So if you had a 5,000 pounds starting budget, your goal would be to launch a product that sells around 5,000 pounds per month in revenue. If you try and launch a product that sells for more than that, you're just not gonna have the cash flow to launch it. And if you try and sell a product that sells way under that, then you're just not utilizing your budget fully. So for this example, let's say that you had a starting budget of 5,000 pounds. You just wanna select a slight range here. So I would select something around 4,000 to around 6,000 pounds in revenue, just to give us a little bit of room here. Now, once you've landed in that monthly revenue, we've just got two more filters we need to add, and that is shipping size and weight. So for shipping size, you wanna select everything apart from oversize. I've now selected everything apart from oversize. And then finally, you want to select a maximum weight of around four pounds, which is just under, or I think around two kilos if you're based in the UK or Europe and you use the metric system. Now, the reason why you wanna select this is because you don't want your Amazon fulfillment fees to be too high. If we look at the rate of card here, you can see that basically once you start to get over 1.9 kilos, around four pounds for either small parcel or standard parcel, that's when the fees really jump up. So here they jump from three pounds 58 to five pounds 62. And for standard size parcel, they jump from three pounds 90 to five pounds 65. Also, again, these fees really jump up when you start to get to oversized products. You can see they are much higher here. So if you can avoid oversized products and any products over 1.9 kilos in weight, your fulfillment fees are gonna be cheaper. Then once you've added in all those filters, all you need to do is come down and click search. Now, after you click that search button, what the tool is gonna do is it's gonna look through Amazon's whole catalog of product and it's gonna find all of the products that meet the criteria, meet those filters that you added into the tool and then display them to you. Now, before you look through these results, the first thing you need to quickly do is look at how many results the tool has given you. So here you can see the tool has given me over 500 results. Now this goes back to what I was saying about selecting a subcategory instead of a category. Now if you're on the platinum plan, this tool will only show you 200 results maximum. And if you're on the diamond plan, which I'm on, the tool will only show you 500 results maximum. Now, what that means is you'll only see the first 500 results. There's probably thousands of products that meet my search criteria here, but I only see the first 500. I don't see all the rest. So to make sure that you actually get all of the results you're looking for, you need to be more specific about the subcategory. And this is because I've selected just a general category. So if you get over the 200 or 500 results, depending on what plan you're on, what you need to do is be more specific, is go down a little bit further in subcategory. So what I would do is click on edit filters, 
and then I would click on home and kitchen and instead of home and kitchen I would actually unselect that and I would come down to select a more of a subcategory so maybe we'll look for something like uh, storage and organization uh, baskets and bins um, maybe we'll be a bit more specific well yeah let's do baskets and bins and see how that works and see if that makes a difference we'll apply those filters and we'll see how many results we get drum roll please okay so we only have 161 results so this is under the maximum number of results i know that i am now seeing all the results that meet that criteria in that subcategory i'm not missing any results and this is exactly what you want to see so just make sure that this number is under the maximum number if it's not drop down another subcategory okay guys so then what you want to do is look through these results and you want to try and see if any of these products kind of meet the criteria that you're looking for and would make good amazon fba product ideas so this is things like being simple durable everyday products that would benefit from branding because remember you're going to be private labeling these products so you want to avoid things that are fragile complicated electronic and so on and if you want a full list of products that you should be avoiding which will help you kind of narrow down these choices at this point i'll link to a video up here i'm never sure where it is but i'll link to a video somewhere up here which will show you what kind of products you want to avoid so yeah, go through this list, find any products that you think would make a good Amazon FBA product based on that criteria that I just mentioned. And then what you wanna do is you wanna take these and add these to an Excel list. So here's an example of the product research tracker that comes with the AB Academy. But of course you can create something similar to this yourself. But if you want access to this product tracker, as well as some really awesome in-depth training and lifetime one-to-one -one support, then make sure to check out my full training and mentorship program. I'll put a link down in the description. You can also book a one-on-one -on -one free discovery call to see if it would be a good fit for you and your needs. Now, when you're adding product ideas to this list, you need to make sure that you're adding the main keyword for each one of these products. So what do I mean by main keyword? Well, main keyword is the keyword for the product that has the highest search volume and is most relevant. So most accurately describes the product. Now, if you don't know what this is, let me show you a quick trick to find out. So what you wanna do is come back into Helium 10, come to tools and then under keyword research, you wanna click into the magnet tool that will take you to here. Again, select the correct marketplace and then enter the keyword which you think may be the main keyword for the product. So let's say that I think that laptop riser is the main keyword. I would click on laptop riser, then click get keyword. The Going to want to scroll down and under match type you want to select organic and then click apply filters and then you want to come down and look at the search results so we can see here that laptop riser has search volume so 4,800 people are searching for laptop riser on amazon per month but what we want to find out is is there a keyword with higher search volume that is uh that more people are using so what you want to do is come to the search results and then we want to click on where is it search volume so we want to filter these results by search volume so the higher search volume ones come at the top and we can see that laptop stand has 58,000, just under 58,000 searches per month which is much higher search volume so this is going to be the main keyword laptop stand not laptop riser and that's the one that you're going to want to add to your product tracking tool so you should now have a long list of product ideas but that's all they are at the moment they're just ideas so for each one of those ideas you now need to analyze them to see if they're viable ideas so step number two is to assess the strength of the demand and the competition and to do this we're going to use the helium 10 x-ray tool now people always seem to overcomplicate this part and i don't know why because it's actually quite simple for a product to be viable it just needs to meet two main criteria Number one, it has good demand. And number two, you feel that you're gonna be able to compete in that market. If there's good demand, you know that if you can compete, you will sell well. So therefore, if you know that you can also compete, you're good to go. Okay guys, so then what you wanna do is come back to your product research tracker and then just copy that main keyword for the product. You then wanna come over to Amazon and then just search that main keyword. Once those results have loaded, you then wanna to come to the Helium 10 Chrome extension and select the X-ray tool. Like I said, guys, if you don't already have Helium 10, make sure to use the links in the description, which will give you big discounts over the suite of tools. Now, once the Helium 10 results have loaded, what you wanna do is select all of the sponsored products so everything that says sp is a sponsored product and then you want to select those and then you want to delete all of those sponsored products 
Um, so you'll see there's quite a few here. The reason why you want to go through and delete these is because we just want to be looking at the organically ranked products whenever we analyze these product ideas. So you can delete those, click remove, and then we're just looking at the organically ranked products here. Now, the first thing you want to do once these have all loaded is that we want to assess the strength of the, the <laughs> can't speak here, the strength of the demand first. So to do that, what we want to do is look at the sales column and the revenue column. So really what we're looking for here is good, strong revenue that's within your budget. Remember, like I said earlier, you can afford to launch a product that sells around one times your starting budget and monthly revenue. So you need to make sure that this revenue is strong within your budget and evenly distributed. You don't wanna look at this and see that only two sellers are doing really good revenue numbers and everyone else's revenue is really, really crap. Um, so if you look here, we can see that this laptop stand, these laptop stands are doing really good revenue numbers. They're fairly evenly distributed. There's a lot of sellers doing really good um, revenue numbers here. So this is what we're looking for. However, you might find that this is outside of your budget, in which case you would have to reject this product idea. Now, if you look at this demand and it's within your budget, it's strong and it's evenly distributed, that's a tick. The next thing that you wanna look at is demand over time. So this gives you a snapshot into demand right now. However, we need to look at what demand has been like historically to try and determine what demand is gonna be like moving forward. So if we look at this top bit here that says search volume, you can click on this and it will show you the search volume for that main keyword over the last 30 days. What we can then do is click at on all time and we can look at it historically. So what you're looking here for here is two different things. You wanna see, has the demand been increasing or decreasing? So is it likely to increase further or decrease further? And secondly, is it flat or is it up and down seasonally? So ideally, you wanna make sure that this is not a seasonal product so that you have consistent sales all year round. And in an ideal situation, the demand should actually be increasing or at least at the very least stable for the product because if the demand is decreasing, then obviously, you know, you don't really want to launch a product where the demand is decreasing over time. So if we look at this product here, which is a laptop stand, you can see that there was a peak around uh, this time here, which is around 2020, 2021. This will be during COVID where loads of people working from home, which kind of makes sense. And then the demand kind of decreased is probably when people started going back to work. Um, however, I would not say the demand is decreasing further. If we look at the last year, we can see that demand has actually been pretty stable. So you can quite confidently say that demand is stable in this niche, which is another tick. So once you've assessed the strength of the demand, what you then need to do next is assess the strength of the competition to see whether you think you would be able to compete in this market. So if we're looking at the Helium 10 X-ray data, what you can look at is things like review rating and review count. So how many reviews the product has and then also how good those reviews are. So if we look at this example, you can see that the review ratings are really high. They're very strong and also there are very high review numbers. Um, so we can see that this is a very established market. Um, the competition is pretty strong here, so it may be hard for us to compete. But once you've looked at that data, you then need to take it a step further, come off of Helium 10 and actually just look through the product listings. Look at the actual products your competitors are selling, look at the quality of the um, of the products, look at the quality of the bundles, whether there are bundles or not, click into your competitors' product listings and actually have a look at how good their listing copy is, how good their product images are. You're just trying to look for any way where you think there are weaknesses in the competition, any gaps in the market that you can fill in any ways that you're able to compete. So you wanna go through that process for every single one of the products you found in step one and then any product that meets those two criteria so it has a good demand and you feel you're able to compete you can then take over to step three which is improving on the competition and to help us do this we're going to use the helium 10 review insights tool so once you've found a product idea that you've analyzed and you found to be viable the final step is to actually develop that product idea into a fully formed offer that you know is gonna be more desirable than what's out there at the moment and therefore is gonna allow you to compete in that market. 
Now, there are loads of different ways that you can do this, but one of my favorite methods is something called review hunting, and I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that. Okay, so what you wanna do is come back to Amazon and then click into one of your competitor's product listings. Once you're in your competitor's product listings, you wanna come back to the Helium 10 Chrome extension, and instead of X-Ray, you wanna come down to review insights. Now, guys, I'm gonna show you how to do this for one competitor, but what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to repeat this process for your top 10 best-selling competitors in this niche. So what this tool is gonna do is it's gonna analyze all of the reviews for this product and show us certain data points about those reviews. So if we come back into the tool, you'll see that there's three different options here. So let's start off by clicking on the variations tab. Now what this is gonna show us is where these reviews are actually coming from. So if there's multiple variations, let's say different colors in this example, it's gonna show us what percentage of the reviews are for which variation. So we can see here that 88% of these reviews come from the black variation, which shows that the black variation shows cells much better than the white variation. Reviews directly correlate to number of sales. Now, the reason why this is helpful is that when you're trying to develop a product offer, if you're not gonna be launching with variations and you're just gonna be launching with one, you need to know which one, what color, what pack size, whatever it might be, is gonna sell best in that market. And this can really help you determine that. If we come back into the tool, the second thing you can do is click on this keyword section. And this is super powerful. So what this tool is gonna do is it's gonna show us all of the main keyword phrases that have been repeated again and again in the reviews. And why this is really helpful is it can show us the common things that customers are complaining about the product and also the common things that they like about the product. And we can use that. So if we do this for multiple competitors, you might find that customers are generally complaining about the same thing with all these products or they're raving about the same thing with these products. Anything that they're raving about, you wanna make sure that you do with your product and anything they're complaining about, you wanna make sure that you actually fix with your product because by doing that, you can actually launch a product that gets better reviews than your competitors and therefore allows you to outcompete them. So if we look at this example here, you can see that people are talking about the product being lightweight, um, but actually you might think this is a positive, but it's not, we can see here that the average reviews uh, rating for people talking about being, it being lightweight is only 3.6. So people are generally complaining about the product being uh, lightweight. Um, some might be saying that it's a good thing. Some may be thinking, saying it's a bad thing. So you can read through the reviews there. Um, we can see that some people are saying that the product is sturdy enough, uh, that it's a great product. Let's see what else they're saying. Um, they, okay, so they're saying a bit flimsy. So this is a great, some great feedback. If you know seven reviews have said that they found the product too flimsy and others have said that the product's too lightweight and they've given it a negative review. So you can use that feedback to then say, okay, I'm gonna develop a product which is less flimsy, a little bit more solid than theirs, especially if you find this is a common, common gripe with customers across all of your competitors. So go through that process and use that information to help develop your product idea. So at the end of this process, you should have some great fully formed, fully developed product ideas that you can then actually take and launch on Amazon. So guys, as always, I hope you found the video helpful. If you did, give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing, and I will see you in the next one.